How are we doing everybody? This is Let's Be Real Brad. Today I'm going to be talking about this interesting topic that is especially important and something I feel needs to be talked about is how have black women been oppressed in the film industry. In this video, I'm not going to be looking at every single detail, but to get you the main points of how this has happened, how black women made it into the film industry, the changes in how films are made, black women becoming filmmakers of their own, and the future of cinema. To start off, the one important and fascinating aspect is that film has always been an imitation of life and life has been an imitation of film. The film industry is, I think, the most important entertainment industry that we have today simply because of how many people it has impacted socially or how we tell the stories of the modern time. Film is all about creating these stories with these different genres and bringing them to life on the big screen, screen to be emotionally wrapped into. Films are works of art that often reflect on the product of time and have been proven with every era of films. Black women in the film industry have continued to be oppressed throughout the history of cinema. They have fought and clawed their way for even a chance to make it into a film itself. Since black women are the most oppressed because women didn't have any rights and been seen as sexualized objects with having with adding on the fact they are black. It's made it extremely difficult to become this beautiful, talented, and successful woman they rightfully deserve to be. To start from the beginning, we must start with slavery and the Jim Crow law era. I know all of us know the tragic and horrific implication it has had on the black community and the United States history, but I do not think people know the extent of it. After slavery ended in 1865 from the 13th Amendment, black people were only free from a humane standpoint, but were still discriminated against and had laws against them to be separated, which would be the Jim Crow laws that were instated shortly after the 13th Amendment. These laws were ended in 1965. This ended only 55 years ago, which in a historical standpoint, this is not long ago, so keep that in mind. This is especially important to bring up because during the classic golden Hollywood era of films from the 1930s to the 1950s, they featured only white people, mostly men, because women were just not seen as important, but that is something we will connect. The stronger reason as to why black people were not cast in films is because of their depiction in the 1915 silent epic drama film, The Birth of a Nation, which is one of the most racist and disgustingly horrible films of all time. The film portrays African Americans, many of whom are played by white actors in blackface, as unintelligent and sexually aggressive toward white women. The film presents the Ku Klux Klan, KKK, as a heroic force necessary to preserve American values and a white supremacist social order. It's one of the most controversial and yet important films in the history of cinema because it revitalized the KKK, but it also reaffirmed and reestablished old and new stereotypes of the black community. This was a monumental film that everyone saw during that time. So these stereotypes have been forged into people's heads of how black people are because Many white people had no idea what black people were like that were not born in the slave era. They only knew these things based on books and entertainment. This affected the black community in which they were still segregated, living in poverty and had no say in American society. So they had no shot in reestablishing themselves as a culture and as a people. Up to 1939's highest grossing film of all time with inflation, Gone with the Wind, which is considered one of the most important and culturally significant films of all time. The film does have many issues and doesn't hold well at all to today's standards, but black commentators criticized the film for its depiction of black people and as a glorification of slavery. They have done so since the release of the film, but initially, newspapers controlled by white Americans did not report on these criticisms. Hattie McDaniels won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, being the first African American to do so, which broke many grounds and was progressive in the film industry. Following Hattie McDaniel's Oscar win, Walter Francis White, leader of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, accused her of being an Uncle Tom. McDaniel responded that she would rather make $700 a week playing a maid than $7 being one. I thought that was such a powerful quote because it shows there is a change in bringing to life a memorable and lovable character, giving a fantastic performance as well, even if it is depicted as being racist. It truly was the first step 
and to change. The Academy Awards have also been a part of this issue in which they have been heavily criticized for not including black male and female actors in their nominations when they've rightfully deserved them. Many black actors have continued to boycott the Academy, but this has changed recently with the Academy Awards changing their rules for eligibility for their films to include more representation, not just for the black community, but all minorities and making women more important to the films. To highlight my favorite black women working in the film industry in no particular order from Viola Davis, Nia DaCosta, Halle Berry, Regina King, Tajari P. Henson, Octavia Spencer, Jada Pickett Smith, Jennifer Hudson, Beyonce, Rosario Dawson, Diana Ross, Angela Bassett, Whoopi Goldberg, Lupita Nyong'o, and Janelle Monet. Now there have been black women starting in films, they did not have much representation in filmmaking besides some small independent short films that didn't make an impact in the film industry. This all changed in 1991 when Julia Dash became the first black female filmmaker to have a full length general theatrical release in the US for her film Daughters of the Dust. Considered an a historical marker suggestive of what will hallmark the next stage of development a more pronounced dysphoric and centric orientation, the film was recognized in 1999 by the 25th annual UR Black Film Festival as one of the most important cinematic achievements in black cinema in the 20th century. Dars of the Dust was placed on the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress in 2004, making it one of 400 other American-made films that are preserved and protected as national treasures. And in 1996, Cheryl Dunes' The Watermelon Woman became the first film directed and written by a black lesbian to explore black lesbianism. Dunes' work has been influential in both black and LGBTQ filmmaking spheres. Now, we jump into today's time and black women are still oppressed, but major changes and progression have begun as we are seeing many black women, not just actors, but also writers, producers, and even directors. More representation has been apparent with many black directors such as Steve McQueen, Barry Jenkins, Jordan Peele, Ryan Coogler, and other black male directors flying onto the scene with a ton of critical and commercial success, having many predominant black casts, which offer much more representation into the film industry. These specific filmmakers have all had themes in their films about the black community being oppressed and being artistically creative in doing so. These black filmmakers clearly understand the oppression black women have had in the industry, so they have decided to make them prominent in their films and created stars out of them. Since all these filmmakers are fantastic directors and know how to get the best performances out of their actors, many black women have exploded onto the scene and now everyone wants to work with them, which is so awesome to see because that is what they deserved. What is awesome is how the Black Lives Matter movement took hold of this year 2020 and totally changed the impact of everything in society, including entertainment, whether it is sports teams changing their names, black actors and other minority groups being able to voice a character of the same race in an animated show, films. People are more socially aware than ever before after the tragic incident of George Floyd and many others. Hopefully we can see more films addressing the oppression and racism that many black Americans have faced over the years and in the present. In conclusion, I truly hope we continue to see more films of black women as I have an extraordinary strong feeling they are beginning to be more prominent in the films they are in. Hopefully people will go out and support these films that are considered fantastic and great by these wonderful filmmakers. Whether this is supporting black male or female directors, this will all lead to some momentous changes as we can see more diverse and more culturally interesting films that break stereotypes and give the love and attention these black actors, writers, producers, and directors all deserve. I hope you all enjoyed this video. So if you did, let me know down below in the comments section any questions, opinions, or comments about any part of the video. Feel free to comment on things I missed or things that should be highlighted. Thank you for taking the time to watch the whole video. If you have not already, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as it means the world you are liking my videos and being subscribed to the channel. You are all the best. As always, I will see you all in the next video.